Good morning everyone, my name is Christian from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome back to Path of Exile where we continue the journey of our ranger throughout the ray class throughout this world in a campaign where or a playthrough where we don't have any grand scheme we don't have a build we're just playing the game for what it is with our current character there is a small change here one of the things that uh, happened was when I started playing around to record Assassin's Creed Valhalla like trying to get it to work, the recording to work, I've played with my recording device quite a bit. So when I started recording a Two Path of Exile episodes, like I still had time and it was planned to record some Path of Exile, I didn't double check what my settings were. So unfortunately one of the things that happened while doing that is that the recordings I had to scrap because they weren't good like if we could all only see the top left part of the screen as it was set up and I couldn't really go back because I advanced through the campaign so I couldn't go back to it anymore unfortunately that means that I had to go back and restart and bring the character up to this level. She's called Jane now, the wolf. She's level 23, I think she she was level 23 the last time we brought her here. I put everything the same, so all the points are all the same. Most The gear is the same because I took it from one character to another. I took also the gems, except for this one, as you can see it leveled up to level 27. And I can't bring it back down just yet, so... You know, unfortunately, things like this happen. But I'm willing to put all the effort in to continue this journey all the same. Without too many changes. I think it's important. I think it's important for this campaign to do so and show you guys... How it would look I'm in not a normal playthrough and what would change in the future. Here we have another so bandit. An enemy of hope. If we help him, we get to regenerate one life per second. Which is pretty good. That means that in a in hundred seconds, we should have full life. So, just as an idea. 2% phys additional physical damage reduction, which can be pretty good. Maybe not early on in the game. But you can imagine that later on when the damage is in the hundreds of thousand, uh, well, this will be actually really good. And then we have 20% increased global physical damage. We are using at the moment, like the split arrow does mostly physical damage. The rest of the points that we get, the rest of the damage we get from our gear. And now we also have on us the Herald device which provides us with 30, 23 to 35 whole damage. Now this could be pretty useful as an idea to go maybe with elemental attack. But since we are going to continue to use split arrow I think we are going to help this guy. 20% might not seem a lot right now. But you imagine once again, later on the, in the game, when you have a hundred thousand damage with your bow, then with all the multipliers and everything else, then 20% is gonna be 12,000, right? Or no, 120,000, all in all. But that multiplier will be applied to everything else that you have which means that later on you might have even more we found here some tree roots that we have to to open at a later date so what are we going to do now we are going to travel in this direction back to riverways and then go for the rest of the bandits okay well let's do that 
Go here through riverways. We're gonna use the potions. And collect a few more things. Now as far as the inventory back home uh, is concerned, I didn't collect anything with this new character, nothing of real use. Let's see, this Quicksilver potion is better than the others. It has 18 quality, that means it lasts for 50 more seconds. This one has increased speed, I think I'll keep the increased speed for now. So, I didn't collect anything with this character as far as potions and our gear goes. I wanted us to play all the same, I didn't want to cha make any changes uh, if possible. And there were a few that I just can't do it differently anymore. But nothing noticeable, so I hope you'll, uh, you'll forgive the unfortunate accident and yeah I really have to pay more attention to to the setup before recording but you know, sometimes you get in the groove of it you think you have all everything ready you're on a roll so just go from one episode to the next without worrying okay we need to find ourselves uh, this is just the riverways. We need to find ourselves. Greater life flask? Grand life flask. Is this bigger? No, this is 360. Let's see, maybe we can mm, find I'm not up to that just yet. better flask in the near future. I forgot my idea. Well, it's still early morning, so coffee is most welcomed here for me. We can now find the Lyra here and take her out. And then also visit the Weaver's Chamber. Where we will be battling a giant spider, as you can imagine. We're starting to run out of mana quite a bit. We'll have to think of whether we can keep this up in the future. At least we have plenty of potions. Seems like we can do well with them with what we have on hand. Yeah, Weaver's Chamber here. Mm. Shall we explore it? Let's go explore it first. And we're using a, a lot of mana. It's not our base skill. The base skill stays pretty much the same as far as consumption goes, generally speaking. The only thing that really changes is all the upgrades. Like everything that we link to the skill generally has a multiplier. So if you look at split arrow, this has mana cost of 7. Get. Adding peer support increases the mana multiplier by 110. Adding the Mirage Archer support increases the mana multiplier by 140%. So that is how everything scales up to a point that uh, you might need more mana to invest in more mana and things like that. Or once again, like there are different ways we can do have a bigger mana pool, have more potions that we can use, have mana leech, or find items that change your mana consumption. For example, there are different skills, different nodes on this huge passive skill tree that makes you use health instead of mana. Let's let's look for it. I think we're in a pretty safe position. I'll put two catapults temporarily. And let's see. Um, mana to life. Is it called like that? Mana to life? Let's see. So maximum energy shield is zero. While not on full life, sacrifice 20% of mana per second to recover that much life. No, that's different. 
30% of damage is taken from mana before life. And that's cool. Eldritch Battery, spend energy shield before mana for skill costs. Energy shield protects mana instead of life. 50 less energy shield recharge. Okay. Removes all mana. Spend life instead of mana for skills. So there we have it. You can make yourself a really tanky character. One that is really tough, I'm really strong. To just yet. And you can give him the ability to use life instead. Which it, of course has pluses and minuses. It really depends on what you're planning to do. And this is where that idea of builds come from right because you in order to somehow get to the next level on path of exile you have to understand these that these and try out that these mechanics like you have to understand that it exists that there are different ways in which you can uh, play this game in which you can build your characters and it's not just a paladin that has uh, normal attacks and has spells and uh, holy spells and then you apply some buffs and you go around him map like you did in Diablo which is not bad it's that kind of simplicity is many times a way for more people to enjoy it and as I said at first I enjoyed that more than anything else I couldn't really enjoy a game that doesn't have specific classes and I think that was also during a time where I had more, I would play a lot more often than I do these days, uh, as in I could play all day for days on end, I would just have school. Uh, now that's not the case anymore. As you can see, we, we are starting to not have that great of a damage anymore at this point like we are getting stuck to spiders as well like we if we get mob like this it's not great let's put down some ballistas give us some help but our damage is starting to fall behind so we need to think of different ways in which we can supply this more than just the simple uh, upgrade of skills or weapons, like even passive skills we, we might look for. Let's see, we got Maligaro's Spike, which we can use to, to open those trees, the tree branches, and then we can look here, what else do we have on hand? Silk Vest, yeah, it's about enough. Herald Device we upgrade, Shramnal Upgrade, Mirage Upgrade, Dash, Fleet Arrow, and Peer Support. Here we have another level up. We are going to go for the Avatar of Hunt first of all. So let's continue to increase damage with bows, evasion rating, and damage over time with bow skills. There we have it. I think that's about it in this I'm dungeon. That just yet. There's no point in exploring this area anymore. Maybe just for the experience, but I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, through where? Through here. Now we're back to the western forest, let's look for Alira, try to take her out as well. And we should go home, visit Oak, get our bonuses. Superior Ancestral Cry. Perform to war cry, taunting all enemies to attack the user. Definitely not, <laughs> we're definitely not gonna use that. My mana is gone. That would be stupid. Attract all the enemies towards you as a non-melee character. Mm -hmm. 
Activate waypoint. Let's follow the road. Let's see if it takes us to Alira or not. I do have to say that I love, I love the music. Haven't listened to it in a while though. After playing through the game a few times, I am now playing this this one with oh a new quest here. Activate the automatic seal. Oh, and now we've opened a way to Lionel's watch. So we need to go there and finish a quest. Now I'm, these days I am playing Path of Exile and listening to podcasts. And it's something I enjoy quite a bit. And you can do that as well. I've seen the, all types of people. I've seen people who played with the background music, with the game's music. And I've seen people putting some heavy metal on it. Like doing speed runs and stuff like that. And they are quite good. Now there are races these days and people can... Uh, to qualify for them you have to do act 1 to 5 like in 2 hours. And I'm working towards that, I'm training towards that. I so she provides us with 5 mana per second. Really good. 20 to global critical strike multiplier. Really good. And 15% to all elemental resistances. That's good as well. Like everything could add up. We could build a character here who has maximum resistances mostly from just the added points and her helping her. But we are going to kill her. We want the other character. Okay, and that took to care of her. Flower. Even a poisonous one like you. Stone hammer. Well, we're going back home now, so I think we're gonna use it. Let's use a scroll to town portal here. Can't see why I'd want to do that here. Talk to them. Vicious projectile support. Supported skill deal more chaos damage over time and supported skills deal 41% more damage over time. Supported skills deal 41% more project, projectile, physical projectile attack damage and 10 less projectile attack speed. Okay. We have faster attack support. Supported skills have 26% increased attack speed. Supported sk attack skills have 36 more elemental damage or close combat support which we do not use. Now how do we want to do this? I think going maybe for vicious projectile support and giving it to this to our shrapnel ballista I think sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, let's take that, give it to the ballista. Maybe we will be using it ourselves Farewell. in the future, but not yet. She tells us to poison the ancient tree. We have what quests? Here to... with the tree. Talk to the bandit lord oak. We have the one with the hideout, but I'm not gonna show it to you just yet. We're gonna check it out later on. I mean, there's I'm not there are quite a few yet. things in it that well in a sense don't matter right now but i am going to show it to you in the near future okay we helped him we took the apex and now we have that increase in damage we are now at 415 attack which is good we were missing some damage there could have sold some of these At this point, since I've been through this part one more time, I want to show you as much as possible through the episode. We level up again. Ooh. 
And as you can see, like these are grayed out, that's because we don't have the necessary level to click here and go to the next one. Sometimes it's about level, sometimes it's about stats. At this point, our precision at level 4 reserves 50 mana. We are running out of mana a lot. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click to dismiss the le this level, like dismiss this notification. So from now on, we are not getting notified anymore if precision levels up. But whenever we feel like we could add some more, we can go back here, click and click at the bottom on precision to level it up and get to the next level. You don't get any advanced experience, so if I level it up now, I'm not going to collect any more experience if I don't level it up. My you can't just gone. jump from level 4 as it is now to a level 20 or something. There are gems, I'm not sure Precision has a level 20. Uh, I think it, the maximum level for Precision is 5. Let's see, can we check it out by pressing Alt, I think? Uh, no, it does not. Let's explore the dungeon, let's see what we have. Although it's... is it a dungeon? It's a pyramid. I think. forgot where we are. Find a way through the veiled ruins. Okay, we're in, in, a ru in the ruin. There's a two stone ring here. What they do is that they have two different types of stone. They provide you with resistances in two areas. Like you saw there is fire and lightning. Can be useful. Can be really useful at times. But it doesn't provide as yet. many bonuses. Like a single stone ring can provide you with between what is it 20 and 30 points of resistance to one element but in time like we are now we are pretty split up you might have one gear that you are not throwing away anytime soon that provides you with a maximum amount of points to fire resistance so you wouldn't be needing the rest you just want to split them, the lightning and the cold in the rings. Could be an idea. Okay, more transmission. I see nothing of value in this gray items. More monsters around here. I'm trying to find mostly the magical ones, those give you the most experience. Let's see, is, it, is the exit through here? No, it's not. We can go to the left. My mana is gone. Yeah, where this magic and as you can see the like these magical creatures take quite a few shots to defeat the yellow swan even more it's good that we have some help with the ballistas i can see an exclamation mark so probably pretty close maybe through there we can go This shouldn't be happening. Not in the world I know. And then everything turned dark. 
We found the exit. Everything is dark now. Travel to Lionel's watch. Travel to the forest encampment. Okay. Well, let's go to the forest encampment first. Let's go to Lionel's watch afterwards. We complete the other quest there as well. well. Be kind. Banish the darkness. We need to travel to the caverns for that. Let's go in Act One. Let's go to Lionel's watch. Can't see why I'd want to do that here. This area is unaffected by the darkness. There we have it. Completed another quest. Got a skill point. And we are going to continue to invest it into the Avatar of Hunt. Where shall we go? It's here in the northern forest. I'm not up to that just yet. And another level up. So perfect timing. Let's go here. Uh, actually, let's go here first and then character. And we see here that the damage per second at this point is 434. And if we're going with the Avatar of Hunt. And what is our evasion? 1300. Okay, so we're going with the Avatar of Hunt, which provides us with 24% more damage, with both 200 evasion and a few other things. We're at 475, and evasion, it's at 731. This is because we have many skills on us, and even here in this. Um, skill tree in the passive skill tree as you can see 24 percent increased evasion rating which increases this base value of 200 evasion rating so everything is a multiplier you you have to look for them in your uh, in planning out your character and your evasion like everything that works well together gone. and there are things that don't work well together like you can make mistakes thinking that some skills are better than others but it's not always the case anything else of value here the bone bow might be good but we're gonna take that as well lucky for us we found many magical creatures here which means our experience just like, look, we're very close to leveling up again. Another Grand Mana Flask. Yeah, let's collect some of these potions as well. So that we can use it. The Dread Thicket. The Dread Thicket is a side area. I don't think there's anything inside it well there is one i'll be showing you showing it to you now rogue exiles yeah. mm, quite a bit of stuff some iron rings another grand flask perfect a ruby ring let's get that Vicious projectile support, we have this already, but we're gonna take it. A crimson jewel, nice. Studded belt, another cobalt jewel. This was quite good as far as chest goes. Move quickly through the dungeon, explore it out. Get these contracts, we might use them in I'm the not future. Up to that just yet. Here you have that sign. Let me show it to you really quickly. This sign is a hideout as you can see here like talk to helena in your hideout whenever you go around the map and you see that sign you will talk to helena and then you have to explore like this is a hideout this is something that you will be able to pick 
as soon as you take care of all the monsters inside it you will be able to pick it you just have to do this quest once to unlock it once per account as far as i i saw don't know if anything changes for hardcore and all that but it doesn't seem like it it seems that it's per account and so you find these places in different maps uh, that you unlock and then you get for example that forest my mana is gone and you can decorate it and you can do a whole lot of things inside it something personal it's something just for your own people can visit it if they're in your party and you invite them out but i'll show as i said i'll show that to you later it it makes more sense as far as what role does the safe house have in in path of exile Let's put down some ballistas. Yeah, they're they're a big help. They're attracting some fire away from us, so this can be really good. You can even focus your builds, like your characters, around making ballistas. Like that's all. Make yourself. I would imagine that one way you could do it is make yourself like really tanky and find ways maybe to improve the ballistas um, like provide buffs or other things yeah you can do it like that what shall we go for next where are we at now we are here now let's look for what is for bow I think a bit more damage wouldn't hurt us. Even some defense as well. Deadly draw. Physical damage with bows. Bows have 15% chance to cause bleeding. 30% increased damage over time. Bleeding is damage over time. So that works together. Bleeding you inflict deals damage 10% faster. Okay. Heavy draw. Increases physical damage. Reduces stand threshold. Meaning that you can stand them faster. Increase the stun duration, increase area of effect and damage over time with both skills. This one gives overwhelm. This increases the critical strike. Hunter's Gambit, Chaos damage over time, we don't use Chaos damage. Master Fletcher increases damage with bows, attack speed, global accuracy, arrow speed and damage over time with both skills. And King of the Hill, 16% increased damage with bows, 80% increased critical strike chance with bows, knock back enemies if you get a critical strike with a bow, and 16 increased damage over time with the bows. I think I like this. 80% chance that when we do a critical strike, that the enemies will be pushed back. I think that's going to be very useful for us. Right? Like, we don't want as a ranger... We don't want enemies anywhere close to us. So it's going to be important that we make sure they are not going to be near us. And having a bit of knockback is it should be useful for that role. But that's all the time that we have for this episode i'm just gonna I'm look here to for the yet. exit and i'll put a cut in here i hope you have enjoyed it i'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through the ancient pyramid for the moment i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time